At an age when most girls prepare for their first day of high school, a young Cambodian girl's life was being derailed by an act of betrayal from the very person who ought to have been a wellspring of love and care, her mother. Trey Knight was just 14 when she was robbed of her innocence and her childhood interrupted. from decades of war, turmoil and a self-inflicted holocaust that has left a legacy of horror. In part, it's replaced its ashen past with the promise of a developing economy that ranks among the fastest growing in Southeast Asia. Like many of its neighbors, private sector and foreign direct investments have bolstered the country's wealth, and Cambodia now proudly wears a glossy new identity amidst an aura of hope but only just. Sadly, the growing affluence is not replicated beyond Cambodia's cities and industrial townships. While urban Phnom Penh projects an image of wealth and modernity, little has changed in the lives of rural Khmer over the last decade. Hidden in ramshackle shadows, most Cambodian families lead a hard scrabble existence earning just one US dollar a day, or even less. Despite the abject poverty that surrounded her, Shri Knight would have given anything to keep the status quo if she had only known what the future held in store for her. Unfortunately, her mother had to escape the clutches of mounting debt, and in the most desperate of measures, she chose to barter Shri to strangers and to a nightmarish life into the abhorrent world of child prostitution. Shre Knight first arrived at Phnom Penh's notorious red light area, in a place with the infamous moniker of the Anarchy Building. Initially, she was treated fairly well. Her first few days saw her being fed with ample meals, along with small doses of deceit. She even landed a job selling drinks. But there were signs that something else was going on, and she would have to do much more than just sell drinks. The realization set in when she found herself a helpless prisoner under lock and key in a cesspool of vice. Abandoned by her mother, Shre suffered the ultimate indignity. She was reduced to a commodity in the cruel marketplace of human flesh, where the average cost of a prepubescent virginal female ranged from as low as 10 US dollars to as high as 100 US dollars. In a country where agriculture and the textile trade have been traditional mainstays, the sex industry is currently estimated to rake in a staggering 6% of Cambodia's GDP. It has emerged as one of the most lucrative industries in Cambodia. Sri Knight, 
was just one in a sea of some 15 to 20,000 women and children servicing the arena. I think that there's two different issues. One is um, that there's a, a difference between the commercial sex industry, which is one form of structural injustice, and sex trafficking. And I think that prostitution creates a, a veil of perception about what sex trafficking really is. Um, because it paints a veil that women have choices and are involved in prostitution voluntarily uh, as opposed to the young women that we work with that are um, coerced, tricked, um, kidnapped or forced um, into the sex trade. James Pond runs a non-profit organization that rehabilitates trafficked sex workers. Here at their shelter, the girls are provided with life skills, academic education, and holistic counseling. Activists like James are fervent in raising awareness of the issue of child sex slavery, in the hope that demand for child prostitutes will be quelled. I think what drives that is, is the demand of men, both uh, foreign sex tourists coming to Cambodia to have anonymous sex while they're away, as well as the local population, which believes that um, prostitution is socially acceptable. Cambodia has come to be known as a pervert's paradise, where prepubescent virginal girls are especially prized. In this context of cruelty, a girl like Shrey Knight could have a price tag of as much as 400 US dollars for her first time. Her owners spared no pains in her preparation, ensuring maximum return on their investment. Shrey Knight was sold off by her mother to free herself from the clutches of poverty. She was only 14 when she was packaged by pimps and seized into the dark depths of Cambodia's child sex industry. Mired in the heart of Phnom Penh is the sex trade, where it's estimated that 30% of the prostitutes are below the age of 18. It is an environment contextualized by perverse values, bonded in a culture. There is a widespread belief among Cambodian men that sex with a virgin has rejuvenating benefits, contributing to a man's longevity. At 14, Shrey was at the pinnacle of her value, in the eyes of her captors. A fact borne out when she lost her virginity to a foreign customer who willingly paid her pimps the princely sum of 300 US dollars. Nice girl. How old is this one? 14. Only. Good, good. Okay. Okay. She was a flower in full bloom. <laughs> While those who entered the sleaze by choice could technically leave whenever they wanted, it was a completely different story for those trafficked into the industry against their will. This is especially so when they enter the business at such a young age. Like all of them, Shrey Knight became a virtual hostage, told by her agent that her earnings would be sent back home. While the extra cash would be a welcome relief, easing her mother's mounting debts, Shrey Knight felt it was a meager consolation for the horror she endured on a daily basis. 
dương chốt rồi mua về dương rót trên địa bàn nó kê và hai chỉ chập khi khi rồi mua về cầm nẹt lên anh nó ai tự thứ ba của xã dương In Knight's particular case, um, her mother was under a contract to the brothel owner, and so she owed money, um, and I think she was compelled to make sure that that debt was paid so that she didn't put her family in danger. Um, as well, there was also the physical, psychological, and emotional coercion that, that occurs with girls that um, they can't run. Even though they physically could, psychologically, they are so um, under pressure to stay there that they'll remain there. Her daily prayers for relief and refuge is a ritual shared and repeated by every child prostitute the world over. But the future remains especially bleak for most of the Cambodian victims. Far from easing off with an improving economy, Cambodia has become a source, transit and destination country for human trafficking. All the rest of the world know that in Cambodia, they can come and they can spend money, they can buy their freedom. Our uh, judiciary, unfortunately, is not very uh, efficient. Uh, but the, um, the civil society is active. And also we see that some country in the region and also the international community pay a great attention to the problem of trafficking. At times when she couldn't take the physical ordeal, her captors had their ways of coercion. For downtrodden sufferers like Trey Knight, life does hold out a slender hope. And help comes in the form of persons like Pong Chiv Kek. Pong is one of the most prominent Cambodian social activists who rallies for the rights of women and children. Action against sex trafficking has been one of her most fervent causes. Yet she and others like her face an uphill task. Since uh, 1970, as we face so many problems of violent civil war, Khmer Rouge period, etc. So the morality of people are not like before 1970. They sell their own children sometimes. And people think that selling the children is uh, uh, something almost normal for them because they need money. So we have to work from the beginning again. During all of her difficult times, Three Night, as she describes it, lost her freedom her voice, and herself. <laughs> Sri Knight entered the sex industry at the age of 14, sold to pimps by her own mother as a means to ease off the family's mounting debts. How much? Hundreds Soon she would come to endure up to 20 customers a day. Each would contribute an emotional scar so deep as to cut through her very being. They would take a lifetime to heal. Somali Mom is one of the most fervent campaigners against what she sees as a grave injustice against women. And she knows the plight of victims from first-hand experience. Somali is a former victim of child sex trafficking. A lot of the people, they don't understand it. They come to me, they say, Somali, now we're going, saving the girl and saving that and saving that. And I tell them, saving the girl, it's easy. You think five minutes, you go to the brothel, you save once. But after five minutes, how you do with this girl? You need how many years? Five years, 10 years, 20 years to recover them to be a person normal. But they cannot be normal because they have been traumatized, because they have been raped. So how? There is a popular Cambodian phrase that men are gold and women cloth. It is a saying that has strong currency when describing Cambodia's sex trade, because it underscores a problem stemming from deep-rooted gender inequality that still prevails in Cambodia. If a man uh, does something that uh, dishonors him or his family, uh, you can simply wipe it off and it becomes clean again. 
with a girl, once she's been soiled or used or damaged, then you can just throw it away. And, and I really think it speaks to the issue of the status of women and girls, um, particularly in Cambodia, but I think it's also a global issue. The trafficking of women into the sex industry is often tied to entrenched gender constructs that are defined along strong patriarchal lines. The principle of Chi Wapsri, a set of instructions promoting deference and submission to the male members of the family indefinitely, was so entrenched that it formed part of the curriculum in Cambodian schools until only recently. Even he uh, insulted you, looked down on you, even he has another woman, you had to accept everything. You have to behave as a good woman. It means that accept everything. So the reason why men here go to see a prostitute is normal. Some men are married, some men are not. But they go there like they go to a coffee shop taking a drink. You see? So it's very important to change the mentality uh, of the public. In 1992, the average age of Cambodian prostitutes was 18. This dropped to 17 in the mid-1990s. Today, officials say that the average age of the estimated 20,000 sex workers in Phnom Penh is 15. Sri finally saw reprieve from the tortuous misery she endured. She was rescued by undercover officers working in conjunction with the International Justice Mission. Sri is now free from the living hell of forced prostitution. Her recovery, though, is an ongoing process. Sri Knight spent a couple of years in rehabilitation. There, along with other victims who had all gone through the same hellish plight, she was taught life skills and received an education. More importantly, she rediscovered hope and gradually came to find a new optimism about the future. Freedom without a future is simply another form of slavery, and so if we can give girls sustainable, real, significant, dignified futures, uh, that they ultimately will be the ones that will impact the next generation and seeing um, crimes like sex trafficking come to an end. In recent years, significant strides have been made in creating dialogues for action against the blight of child prostitution. This basic awakening has perhaps fostered further momentum for change. New legislation was introduced in 2008 against trafficking and sexual exploitation. A sign that things cannot go on unchecked, and the authorities are getting serious about erasing Cambodia's image as a haven for sex tourism. Translating to an end of stories like Stray Nights in the future. <laughs> And even if the emotional hurt does subside over time, she would still have to endure the most tragic legacy of her past for the rest of her life. Trey Knight is HIV positive, but keeps alive with the help of antiretroviral drugs. The silver lining in her story, at least, is that her life has since begun a new chapter, one that is considerably brighter and more hopeful than her backstory. She teaches yoga. It helps her to find peace with her injustices. And she plans to use her work, her voice, and her courage to campaign for greater social awareness for the plight of girls like her, many still trapped in the depths of despair. ខ្ញុំគិតថាខ្ញុំនឹងអាចរស់នៅដូចគ្មានដតៃទៀតពួកអី
miền tắc chặt của cái miền mà đây không bằng hiện chứng minh. Sex trafficking is not the only issue Cambodian society is grappling with, but it remains interwoven with a host of cultural and structural injustices. It is a window to a social system torn apart by decades of unrest, poverty, and human discontent. Played out in episodes of personal tragedy, like Stray Nights and thousands like her. If we can address the issue of sex trafficking, um, we may be able to address some of the other issues. Um, I think as we're addressing sex trafficking, people are more aware that there are fewer um, opportunities for women, that the status of girls and women is lower, and so it's bringing greater attention to the issues um, of poverty and education, job opportunities, um, as well as the issues of law, government, and structure. By the time she celebrated her 15th birthday, Sre Knight had seen a lifetime's worth of physical and emotional torment, played out through recurring episodes of misery throughout her days and nights. In the darkest depths of her despair, Sre Knight began to search her soul. <laughs> quạt cứ chỉ mặc bạc cát bao nhiêu hai năm mũi nhưng mà toàn ban song con có đây và quạt thưa anh chàng nặng nhom ban mà đong hay chập tụt thai nhom song con quạt mà đong nâng. These heartbreaking stories will continue to be written in the dark recesses of the Cambodian sex trade. It is a pipe dream to hope for the elimination of prostitution, but the continued push by civil society could help curtail the wretched exploitation of the youngest among us in the oldest of mankind's professions. <laughs>